masterful down equipment or or bunny boots. Uh, we had superb equipment. It just didn't yeah. work out that way. Huh? It was a big war. Lots of things didn't happen. Lots uh -huh. of things happened. Yeah. Um, did did the uh, skis and snowshoes um, get over? No, but we got them from the Germans. Uh, those that we captured and whatnot, and that's how we were supplied by both skis and snowshoes. Never did get the skis from the states. Uh huh. But we, and there wasn't too much. There was snow. We went through a whole winter in foxholes and snow. We were pinned down in front of what Riva Ridge uh, was a lookout point for the Germans, so they could see anything we were doing. You can constant firing and whatnot. We were pinned down in foxholes there for some two and a half months before we broke through. Mm -hmm. and, um, and where were you pinned down? Well, uh, above Pitha, uh, in the Apennine, on the Apennine front, um, in front of us was a, uh, a mountain range uh, included Riva Ridge, which is the one of the high, the high point of that range, and on Belvedere, um, another one behind it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it had been that way, I think, more or less a year, year and a half. Uh, and that's why they brought this division in. Mm -hmm. And it worked. We were able to make the assault on Riva Ridge and the rest of the outfit on the others, and we broke through to the Po Valley. Mm -hmm. um, Tell me about the, um, um, the, the assault on Riva Ridge. Well, uh, it goes back to the training that we had, really, the laying out of the routes of what it was going to be of the, while we were in this foxhole situation before we went out on patrols all the time, sometimes on skis, sometimes not, trying to capture some <coughs> of the Tedeschi, of the Germans, in order to get some information what we're doing. And also, our patrols were going up the ridge. The plan was to take the ridge, uh, and then the other two mountain ridges are next to them, which were, gave them the uh, high point to land any kind of artillery below. Mm -hmm. um, so it was about a two-week preparation before, and uh, we took off very late one night, and a group assaulted the ridge, and at the same time, the 86th and 85th moved on their, their places that they were assigned to. Mm -hmm. And it was a total breakthrough. I mean, tremendous fire and a very, very heavy loss of life on our part, uh, but completely surprised the Germans and the assaulting of the ridge. Uh, literally, I mean, coming up over the side of the ridge, which was not a great big mountain climb, but it was significant enough that mm -hmm. nobody thought it could be done. Mm -hmm. And up on ropes was, in the middle was, of the cl night. climbing up a cliff. Cliff, but not impossible cliff. Okay. But a cliff that you needed rope all the way, and you had all your ammunition equipment. Very difficult stuff. Middle of the night. And fortunately, <clears throat> they could have done anything to us. I had one man... There was out to be no shooting, no anything. It was knives only if you ran into any enemies and guards because you didn't want to alert them. And um, skill and suerte and luck, they got to the top. And when they did surprise the troops on the top, and there was a big bottle air, but at the same time, all the other, the rest of our outfit took off. And uh, my particular outfit was on... Uh, for Della Tarathia, the third battalion. Uh, Della Tarathia was Della Tarathia was the last there? ridge that overlooked the valley. So uh, we would be in a position overlooking the Germans in the valley, and they weren't about to give that up. Uh -huh. um, it was a hard battle all the way for everybody in the division, and we succeeded in taking all three in Della Tarathia. I remember very clearly a bombardment that seemed like two days long. It was something like 12, 14 hours straight of bombardment. And you're digging in on a ridge with, in mountains with lots of stone. Mm -hmm. uh, not so easy and a lot of losses. 
I had a, um, at the time I was in charge of a platoon of mortars, 81 mortars. I had been in a rifle company, Company L, mm -hmm. but just when we went down to Texas, before we came overseas, they decided to have a heavy weapons company added, and my company commander was shifting over to there and also the first sergeant, and they brought me with them. They suggested I go. And I said, what's the reason to go? You have all your buddies here and you're, you know, you're set in your place. He said, well, it's not going to do you any harm to be in a, in a heavy weapons company as opposed to a rifle company in combat. And I said, that didn't really feel, actually it was so. It, uh, the casualties were much heavier in, in, in the, the rifle, rifle companies. companies. But um, as it turns out, uh, Dole was with us, for instance, Senator Dole. And he was hit just a few days. He came in as a, uh, a repo depot, a replacement.